Hello everyone, welcome to the daily newspaper analysis of the Shankar Ayas Academy brought to you by the Civil Speedia team. And this current affairs video is for the date 3rd of October 2024. Uh, before going to the list of articles discussed, there is an important announcement to be made. The pre storming series of the UPSC prelims test of 2025 batch 2 starts from 5th of October 2024. So, interested students are welcome to join the test series and the admissions are open. So, now moving on to the topics discussed. The first article title, Cleanliness Not a One Day Task, It is a Lifelong Ritual, says PM, discusses about the Swachh Bharat Mission, uh, Grameen and Urban 2.0 as uh, it marked the 10th anniversary of the Swachh Bharat Mission. And this article is from the Indian Express. The next article titled West Asia Conflict Cast a Shadow Over the India World, where the recent uh, conflict between Israel and Iran have made us to wonder the uh, tensions arising and the impact arising in the West Asia and its impact on country like India. And this article is from the newspaper Live Mint. And the final article discussed titled Temporary Flex Board with Missing Line from uh, Pule Poem Erected at the memorial discusses about Jyotirav's Pule's famous inscription where it had a missing line without the word Shudra. So, this article is from the Hindu. So, without any much further delay, let us get into the article's discussion one by one. Marking the 10th anniversary of the Swachh Bharat Mission, Prime Minister Narendra Modi said that the cleanliness is not just a one day task, but it is a lifelong ritual which has to be followed by generations. The Prime Minister encouraged the state governments to take the mission to district and block levels. He also inaugurated the sanitation projects across the countries. So, in light of this article, let us see what is Swachh Bharat Mission Grameen 2.0 and what is Swachh Bharat Mission Urban 2.0. The Swachh Bharat Mission Grameen 2.0 or SBM G 2.0 and Swachh Bharat Mission Urban 2.0 or SBM Urban 2.0 are extensions of the initial Swachh Bharat Mission which was launched in 2014. The main aim of the Swachh Bharat Mission is to focus on the open defecation free India and to bring sustainable practices and also to promote them equally. So, the Swachh Bharat Mission comes under the Ministry of uh, housing and urban affairs. Now, moving on to the uh, Swachh Bharat Mission Grameen 2.0 Rural Initiative and their objectives. So, after the successful uh, first phase of the Swachh Bharat Mission, this was Swachh Bharat Mission Grameen 2.0 was launched in 2019. So, it ensures ODF plus status that is which focuses on the safe management of the solid and liquid waste management. It also promotes having community sanitation complexes and also having waste management units in rural areas. The other objective of the uh, Swachh Bharat Mission Gramin 2.0 is to strengthen the grey water and plastic waste as well as improving the hygiene of the household. So, here grey water means relatively a clean water which comes from the sink, uh, baths and washing machine. Now, moving on to the uh, open defecation plus goals. The Swachh Bharat Mission 2.0 emphasizes sustaining the ODF status that is open defecation free status and shifting towards uh, ODF plus which includes ODF sustainability and solid and liquid waste management. Here, the village level management systems are being set up including compost and soap pits. And also it is aimed at managing biodegradable and non-biodegradable waste. So, now let us look into the behavioral change which has brought in by the Swachh Bharat mission. So, massive community-led initiate, massive community-led initiatives are driving cleanliness awareness in rural households through campaigns like the Gandagi Mukt Bharat that is garbage free India and other Swachhata drives. The government has focused on information education and communication activities to promote the awareness and to ensure people to understand the importance of sanitation and sustainable sanitation. The program is funded with an outlay of 1.4 lakh crore allocation and aligns with other uh, government initiatives like the Go Bardhan, that is the Waste to Wealth program. The government also focuses on behavioral change campaigns to improve community participation. Now, let us move on to the Swachh Bharat Mission Urban 2.0 Urban India. Now, let us look into the key objectives here. Swachh Bharat Mission Urban 2.0 was launched in 2021 
which aims to continue to work done in urban areas with special focus on scientific solid waste management where there is managing of urban waste in more efficient manner and reducing landfill use and recycling more products. The next objective is to use water management, introducing measures to treat and reuse wastewater especially in cities with population of less than 1 lakh. This initiative or this objective was kept in the uh, Swachh Bharat Mission Urban 2.0. And the next objective is to have a sanitation infrastructure, encouraging the use of sludge treatment, basal sludge treatment where it is nothing but the slurry of both solid and liquid waste management. So, uh, among the sanitation infrastructure, this basal sludge treatment and, sweep and other sweeper networks in urban local bodies have been initiated. So, SBM urban 2.0 as total financial outlay of 1.441 lakh crore. The program is working towards certifying cities as ODF plus, ODF plus plus and creating garbage free cities to standardized ratings and assessments. So, coming to the end of this topic, let us move on to a practice question. With reference to the Swachh Bharat mission, Ramin 2.0, Consider the following statements. SBM 2.0 ensures open defecation free status in rural areas is sustained and focuses on ODF plus. The mission focuses only on waste management in rural area. The SBM G 2.0 promotes plastic waste management and has a specific target for solid waste management. Which of the following given statements are correct? Option A 1, Option B 1 and 3, Option C 2 and 3 and Option D 1, 2 and 3. The correct option is option 1 and 3 only. Here option 1 statement is right and option 3 statement is right whereas 2 is not right as uh, state uh, Swachh Bharat Mission 2.0 Grameen focuses on both the solid and liquid waste management and not just liquid waste management. A grand memorial consisting of the 18 feet bronze statues of the renowned uh, social reformer couple that is the Jyoti Bhai Govindra Pule and Savitri Bhai Pule was recently inaugurated at Nasik Maharashtra. The memorial included an inscription from Jyoti Bhai Pule's famous work Shed Karyacha Asut where it inscribes without knowledge wisdom was lost, without wisdom righteousness was lost, without righteousness progress was lost, without progress wealth was lost and without wealth the Shudra suffered. So much disaster was caused by the lack of knowledge. But the line with the word Shudra was absent from the inscription. So, the entire uh, board was pulled down. So, in light of this article, let us look into the renowned couple that is Jyoti Bhai Pule and Savitri Bhai Pule. Jyoti Rao and Savitri Bhai Pule are pioneers in promoting female education and empowerment. They fought against the caste and gender discrimination in India. Jyoti Rao Pule was an Indian social activist, a thinker, a anti-caste social reformer and a writer from Maharashtra and his ideologies were liberty, egalitarianism and socialism. In 1840, when child marriages were very prevalent, the 10-year-old Savitri married the 13-year-old Jyoti Rao. They later worked to end the child marriage and promoted widow remarriage. The uh, Jyoti Rao's famous works would be Gulamagiri, which was published in 1873, Triya Ratna in 1855, and Sarvajanik Satyadharma Pustak, which was published in 1891. So, looking into the social reforms by Jyoti Rao Pule, Jyoti Rao started to educate his wife at home and trained her to become a teacher. Jyoti Rao Pule recognized the difficult conditions faced by the uh, young widows and founded an ashram for young widows and advocated the uh, widow remarriage. He criticized the orthodox Brahmins and upper caste calling them the hypocrites. In 1868, he built a common bathing tank to outside the home to demonstrate equality and promote equality with the people of all caste. So, his awareness campaigns were later inspired from the figures like Dr. B. R. Ambedkar and Mahatma Gandhi who led to the significant movements against the anti-caste movement and caste discrimination. Jyoti Pule is credited by many as he was the first to use the term Dalit to describe the oppressed groups which is marginalized outside the 
Varna system. Now looking to the social reforms by Savitri Bai Pule. In 1852, uh, Savitri Bai Pule founded the Mahila Seva Mandal to raise awareness about the women's rights. Savitri Bai Pule published Kavya Pule and Bhavan Kashi Shubod Ratnakar in 1854 and in 1892. Her poem Go Get Education urged the oppressed communities to pursue education to break free from the oppression. She campaigned against child marriage and supported the widow remarriage. In 1873, she initiated the first Satya Shodok marriage, uh, rejecting dowry and other traditional uh, rituals which also included Brahmin priests. Now let us look into this uh, Satya Shodok Samaj or called as the Truth Seekers Society and it was founded in 1873 by couples uh, Jyoti Rao Pule and Savitri Bai Pule along with the other like-minded individuals. Here the objective is to provide lower caste, poor people and women to have access to education, social rights and social liberties. Next, it advocated for social reforms like affordable weddings, uh, intercaste marriages and abolition of child marriages and widow and promotion of widow remarriages. The Samaj supported the widow remarriage and promoted equality in marriage practices. It aimed to provide education to lower caste, scheduled caste and scheduled tribes. The organization also raised awareness about oppressive social traditions and to empower the marginalized communities. Looking into the legacy of the couple, they established by 1848, the couple established a school in Pune for girls, Shudras and Adi Shudras. In 1850s, they founded two educational trusts which is the Native Female School in Pune and the Society for Promoting the Education of Mahars, Monks and other marginalized groups. In 1853, they opened a care center for pregnant widows to ensure safe deliveries and combat the practice of infanticide and which was caused by social pressures. The Balhatya Pratibandha Griha, home for the prevention of infanticide was set up within their home. So, in light of this article, let us see a MCQ question. With reference to Savitri Bai Pule and Jyotira Pule, consider the following statements. They aim to provide education to lower caste, scheduled caste and scheduled tribes. Jyotira criticized orthodox Brahmins and upper caste calling them stereotypes. In 1873, Savitri Bai initiated the first uh, Satya Shodok marriage. Which among the follow above statements is so are correct? Option A, 1 and 2 option b 2 and 3 option c 1 and 3 and option d 1 so the correct option is c option c 1 and 3 only here jyoti rao criticizes the brahmins as orthodox brahmins as hypocrites and not stereotypes Moving on to the article in the livement, the article discusses the potential uh, economic and market impacts on India due to the escalating conflict in West Asia. As tensions rise between Israel and Iran, there are concerns about disruptions in crude oil supply stock market instability and job losses for the Indians in the region. And additionally, there is a concern about the potential for increased freight cost and uh, geopolitical tensions affecting the Indian exports. So, in light of this article, let us look into the geopolitical significance of West Asia first. The West Asia has important nations like the Israel, Iran and Saudi Arabia and each are having different relationships including tensions between Iran and Israel or Saudi Arabia and Iran. So, these countries are one of the key players when it comes to West Asia. Uh, looking into the strategic choke points, the Strait of Hormuz is one of the most critical waterways in the world. So, around 20% of the global oil passes through this strait and any conflict here would affect oil supply and global trade in a larger amount. Looking into the India's interest, West Asia is crucial for India due to its reliance on oil dependency where 85% of the oil imports are from West Asia or this region and its larger diaspora that is over 8 million workers of Indian and its trade routes that passes through this region is very very important. Looking into the impact on oil prices and the energy security, as I told before, India imports about 85% of its oil and most it comes from West Asia. Thus, any instability in this region or conflict in this region can lead to shortage and price hikes. Here, 
if the conflict intensifies, oil prices could surge, increasing India's import bill. This will put pressure on the Indian economy by raising the cost of energy and transportation cost. When it comes to energy diversification, India is trying to reduce its dependence on the West Asia by exploring the renewable energy like the solar and wind, expanding oil uh, imports and from other countries and building strategic oil reserves for emergencies. Now looking into the impact of trade and economy, countries like the UAE, Saudi Arabia and Iraq are among India's top trading partners. Disruptions in the West Asia could impact these relationships and it can have an impact. Now looking into the supply chain disruptions, conflicts can block the sea routes causing shipping delays, uh, increased cost and impacting global supply chain. And also looking into the inflation and fiscal pressure, when the oil prices rise, it leads to higher inflation that is the increase of the price of the goods. The government may uh, have to spend more on the subsidies increasing its fiscal burden. Now looking into the diaspora and job market, over 8 million Indians live and work in West Asia and spending money back home that is Indian diaspora in West Asia sends over uh, 40 to 45 dollars billion annually which is known as the remittances annually to India and this remittances is vital for their families and Indian economy. Conflicts can lead to job losses and reduced remittances and it can affect the livelihood of many families. Now, in light of these problems, let us see what is India's diplomatic response. First is to have a neutral stance. India maintains uh, neutrality, supporting peace and stability without taking sides in the conflicts. India engages with West Asian nations and other oil producing countries uh, to ensure the steady supply of oil during such crisis. And the main aim is to have a balancing relations. India carefully balances its relationships with Israel and the Arab world, uh, avoiding tensions with either side while maintaining its economic and strategic interest. Now, finally, moving on to the global and regional implications. When it comes to global economy, West Asian conflicts can impact the global economy by disrupting oil markets, affecting the global uh, supply chain and raising transportation cost as discussed before. Here, along with it, the India strategy uh, interest that is beyond having oil, India seeks to strengthen its political as well as the economic influence in West Asia even among such global disruptions which is very crucial and critical for India's overall energy and global trade positioning. So in light of this article let us view a MCQ question. Consider the following statements regarding the significance of West Asia of India. The Strait of Hermes is a critical choke point through which a large portion of India's crude oil imports pass. India imports more than 80% of its crude oil requirement from West Asia. The Indian diaspora in West Asia contributes significantly to India's remittances. Which of the statements given above are correct? Option A 1 and 2, Option B 1 and 3, Option C 2 and 3 and Option D 1, 2, 3. The Answer is a bit straightforward. The option is option 1 and 2 and 3. Thank you for watching this video. Don't forget to give a like, comment and a share. So to further not to miss any other content, subscribe to our channel. Thank you and have a nice day.